And welcome back to Mag Sam's Let's Play Kodelka. I'm RM2K Midi, and with me is Deathtron Hammer. Yo, whoa! So it looks like we're standing in the same place, but what I've done in between is run all the way back down to that plant room, heal, and come back, and we picked up items and leveled up and crap. It's good to grind a little bit in this game. It, it, a little grinding can go a long way. So I just want to show you this battle system a little bit. Here's your stats and the bonuses you start out with each. Some of those pluses and minuses come from your armor, some of them come from pre-existing stats, and some are from boosts in between levels, the four points you get each time. I pronounce the last name as Isan. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, Isan. I don't remember her saying it out loud. Flare is almost up to level 2. You'll probably take a couple more uses to get that leveled up. Here's the buffs. And here's my pistol. My pistol's almost level 3. That's going to be nice. Edward, uh, he's leveled up a couple weapons. And James is just getting started. He's several levels behind us. He'll eventually catch up, though. I'll take this opportunity to save my game again. Yeah, in RPGs, it's always good to take the opportunity to save. Like I said, I've only died once in this game, except for the time I had to restart. But being paranoid with saving never hurts. Come on, action, but some of the... This is a pain in the ass. You have to hit X to get out of this, but any other button will bring you right into the save menu. Let's see this direction first. No, nothing. An invisible wall. She's trying to get out of the TV. There's blood on that door. Huh. That door is so background scenery, it totally doesn't stick out. I don't even need to see what's in that door. Let's go to the end of the hallway. Uh... Hey. 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 Wait a minute. Hey. Edward. Holy crap. You should have just died. I wanted you to lay down and die. <laughs> A ghost? Yeah. Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. Let's stay away from that area for a while. Let's go look at the room with the door. Yeah, the blood seems totally less creepy now. Some zombie and a hand or a severed arm. Is it the zombie severed arm? Maybe. Let's reload. I'm, I'm running low on bullets. Okay. As a joke, people way back in the day when we were playing Resident Evil, this is like over 10 years ago now. We had a joke making fun of the T-Virus and the G-Virus. We called it the C-Virus. I think it was named after an old compact computer. RM2 came in and his brother had. I don't know why we associated it with this computer, but anyway, the virus was as such that even if you blew up the zombie's head, you just, like, keep trying to ram down his neck hole ineffectively. <laughs> just, it, it's no longer a threat, but it's really annoying. Like, stop that zombie. Uh, the virus would come out when you broke in, open up the computer because it had like a factory seal that you were, you're breaking the warranty when you open it. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a piece of crap to do that one. So even like, when you bought it, 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 it it was missing half the software it was supposed to have. 
and then they gave me the wrong, um, the wrong hardware was in it, too. It was supposed to have a, uh, it had two CD-ROM drives, so a DVD drive and then a CD burner. The CD burner was supposed to, this is completely irrelevant. The CD burner was supposed to have a rewritable drive. It didn't have it. It didn't come with any of the burning software, so the drive was useless until I spent two hours on the phone with tech support. I've never bought another compact. Yeah, I just, I just, I was there when the day you guys bought it. Right on home, turn it on. It was so underwhelming, even then. Windows 98. But anyway, back to the original point. Why I was bringing up the C virus and all that. That's what that, that hand reminds me of. Like this was. Zombies. You just start every part of the zombie with the hand still coming at you and trying to eat you somehow. Somehow. But dude, you don't have a stomach! <laughs> yeah, there you go, audience. You've been let in on a very old, very stupid in-joke. Congratulations. Yeah, let's play sometimes when we have an inside joke. We stop ourselves and don't explain the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So if you hear something like that, it might be along these lines. <laughs> okay. Bloody door looks great. Yeah. Ah, a pile of corpses. And some bullets. Now, oh, Listle. Listle is like your ether. Zombie werewolf dog with human legs. Uh, that kind of creepy. Precious was the word I was going for, but yeah, creepy word. Creepy totally word. Who's a good little abomination? You are. Yes, you are. You're about to go play fetch with the ghost. Yes, damn that. Thing. It reminds me of the ugliest dog I ever saw. <laughs> Do I ever want to know? <laughs> it was down in Mexico. <laughs> was, was, was this the dog you decapitated? No. Okay, that's another story we'll get. <laughs> we'll get to that. This is called El Perro Elefante, is what this old lady kept calling it the elephant dog. <laughs> Why? It had mange, so all of its fur was missing, except in patches. It had this ugly gray skin, looked just like an elephant. Oh! <laughs> it really was. Oh, it was just this <laughs> ragged. Like, why is this? Yeah, and it would come up to you like wanting food. It acted like a normal dog, but it was hideous. <laughs> Goodness, this building is full of dead bodies and skeletons. It's full of ghosts and spirits. Oh, I can feel them. Oh, my head hurts. I got a bad feeling about this. Horrible. Dear Lord, please save these lost souls. This must have happened a long time ago. Oh, and the power is so strong. If I can channel some of these no, spirits, don't do it. maybe I can find out what happened here. Channel the spirits? Shame on you. You two should be praying for their souls. The spirits floating in this room. I can let them possess my body so they can talk. Oh, the reason I came here is I heard the cry of one particular female voice. She was... I will not stand for this. Not only do you not believe in God, but now you're going to disturb the spirits? Shut up! Would you stop bothering me? Oh, oh. Chains and darkness. Oh, oh. death. Oh, oh no. Oh. 
Oh, there were so many of them. This is hell. What? What's going on? Oh, they were imprisoned and tortured and, oh, thousands of them. I killed them! They cut off my fingers. They crushed my legs. They smashed my head and cut out my guts. They took everything from me. They locked me up and chopped my body. Go oh, my eyes! Oh, my ears! Oh, they're burned! Help! Help! <gasps> How horrible. This place used to be a prison. For hundreds of years, kept in secret. Whoever went against the authorities or misconducted themselves in any way were locked up here and killed. No! Don't touch me! You piss off! Go to hell! I wonder what would drive someone to start practicing calling spirits like that. That seems incredibly dangerous. Yeah, like it would just drive you insane. But maybe it's not something Kodoka can turn on or off, right? Oh. Uh, that's the vibe there, how all of a sudden that last bird is like, DON'T TOUCH ME! That. See a dress in Very old-fashioned dress. I could look 30 years ago. But... So the dog is just like happy, unaware of its grotesque nature or disease, like, BYE! Alright, okay. I think since I may have, I, I accidentally mentioned it, I think Arm 2, I oblige you to explain how you decapitated a dog in Mexico. Um, well, not you personally. Let me say that as a disclaimer beforehand. He did not do it personally. It's yeah. going down a uh, highway. Look at a little battle here. Going down a highway in the Yucatan Peninsula in the middle of a jungle. No villages or towns for miles. In our rental car. And all of a sudden my friend in the front seat says, Dog. Two seconds later there's a dog under our car. It rips off the bumper of the car. And the head goes flying up in front of the driver. It falls down the road behind. And the car crushes the body. And thus began the nightmare with the Mexican rental car company that tried to get out of paying, even though they required us to get insurance for damages like that. They still wanted to rip us off and deny our claim. But unfortunately, your friend was a lawyer, right? No, he called the lawyer and scared the crap out of them. <laughs> nice. And everything was okay, but ruined half our vacation. Because there's a constant stress there. Yeah. They just outright lied when they hadn't talked to the insurance company at all. They only really declined your claim. Oh, which insurance company? Well, oh, um... Uh, we work with many insurance companies. Well, oh, which one denied the claim? Uh, uh... I'll get back to you. <laughs> Lesson learned. Uh, don't go to Mexico unless you're ready to deal with a lot of crap. Well, they just probably think you're stupid American tourists, uh, because you build yeah. you for money. Because this rental car agency was in Cancun, they probably get a lot of drunken Americans going down there. Yeah. Uh, we work hard for our money, we're not going to throw it away. Needlessly. They do rich kids who just throw our money at the problem and it can go not away. There. Oh, repairs eight hundred dollars? Sure, we'll take care of it. I don't have an extra eight hundred dollars. 
Especially not when I paid for insurance. <laughs> you made me buy. Anyway, let's get serious here. Drive to Jerky. Look at this last place that I have not looked. Ominous. You see a closet. You want to open the closet. <laughs> a corpse. In a wedding dress. Oh man, that was creepy. Look at this attacks. Hey, yeah, yeah, Edward, why don't you marry the mummy and James can perform the wedding? He's a priest. I <laughs> know, it worked! Kodoka can be the witness. Yeah! Or bridesmaid! Make it perfect! Ooh. Let's get our new song here. The nice thing- okay, my magic level up. Nice thing is you don't have to wait for the end of the battle for the magic to level up. You can just start using the skill immediately. Okay, he didn't do any damage. Just go beat it with the shillelagh. Pistol went up to level 3. Now yeah, we haven't encountered my most hated random encounter. See, now your next random encounter is gonna be that, now that you mentioned bringing it up. Yeah. If you see it, I'll be cursing a lot. what this lady's story is. Like, she's in a wedding dress. And she's stuck in a closet. There are dresses all over the room, paintings. Okay, I'm getting so many turns in my so I'm gonna assume this is her. Yeah. I don't have anything to remove my status. Keep firing the fifth one again. Get up there, James. Is there any other body in the room? No, it's just hers. Well, it's all the bodies outside the room. Yeah. Okay, um, here's my theory. She was... Are we supposed to be married? Well, it's... If it's her room, that's what the dress is turned about. Let's say she was a patron here at one time, lives here and whatnot. Maybe she's supposed to get married here. And maybe her husband didn't want to commit, or the person who was going to marry her didn't want to commit and kill her. Hmm. Or maybe a jealous woman that also loves the guy. Who knows? I can tell you for sure that it's explained later. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. But I don't remember. So I can't give you any hints if you're on the right path or not. Yeah. But it's just theory on my part. Because I know it's kind of a deliciously macabre how it was done. This yeah, woman in a wedding woman. dress stuck in the Megalith. That's Megalith. Not... Now, you might think that's some, like, Omni spell, non-elemental. That's actually the name for their Earth spell in this game. Aww, oh, but 
That's the name. It does look awesome in a cast, though. Anything in here will better be after to go to that place. Go flatter. We can climb down to where the creepy little girl went. Oh! Awesome! That's exactly the direction I wanted to go. Jake got flattered. The only way up is so the down. Little... Safe here. I'm not supposed to know the code to this at this point in the game, but it's convoluted and you have to backtrack to get... To come all the way back here. So I'm going to get it now. My combination, according to the strategy guide, is... Seven, zero, three, eight. It doesn't change. It's not randomized. Guard's diary. Well, over here, I will also tell you the code to get the big material on the rocket ship in Final Fantasy VII. It's O square X X. There. There you go, anyone who may be playing Final Fantasy VII. Mr. X is playing Final Fantasy VII. I doubt he's listening. No. So when you get items like that, they go to a special folder called Read. Guard's Diary. Hmm, do you want me to read it? Sure. This is pretty long, but it explains a lot. 1st June, 1716. It's been two months since I left Canterbury, owing to my stay at St. Clair's, Lord Webster. I said that the weather would be warm at this time of the year, but it's still brisk in the fishing villages lining the coast. After days of being knocked about in the carriage, I finally round at Nemington, my prison, an evil-looking place, leaning down on a barren plain from atop a cliff battered by the chill sea breezes. Lord Webster told me to keep the strictest confidence. I cannot say what lies within this old and lonely building, only that while I am yet young, I have been a guard many years, and I have never seen nor heard of a gal built in a place such as this. The British spelling for jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yes. <laughs> I did not know! While Lord Webster didn't tell me much about the prison's history, it is easy to imagine the part of this foreboding place stayed in quieting conspiracies and political struggles. Although I do not look forward to spending my days here, I have no choice. My family depends on it. 2nd June, 1716, Nemington Prison, a hell on earth. While conditions here are no worse than Newgate, they are no better. I'd imagine it would be so, but imagining a thing and actually experiencing it are very different. I shudder to think of the countless souls imprisoned here over the centuries. There are people from all walks of life here, from members of the Pale, removed from contention, for an inheritance to simple barbers locked away to prevent them from repeating what they innocently heard while performing their job. Locked away, and tortured, and killed. My research into this prison record show that only a select few of those sent here were ever convicted of a crime. This is not the simple prison it claims to be. It is rather simply a dungeon, where those in power seal away those without it who stood in their way. How ironic that this place, built as a house of God, should become a house of horrors, forsaken by him. 3rd June, 1716. I have discovered something nearly impossible to believe, because I do not wish to. According to the prison records, from 1632 to year last, over 8,200 people have met their maker within these walls. And these are only those for whom there are records. How many more hapless souls have died locked away here, with no one even caring? 4th June, 1716. Today I was ordered by the warden to watch over the prisoners in the West Wing. Although this is my first assignment since arriving, I do not look forward to it. This is diff this is different, ah, uh, from punishing some simple beggars. What sort of man could take pleasure in beating women and children? Received a letter from Mum in Southampton today. She complains that I wasn't able to attend my sister's wedding. Apparently, she married a Gibbs boy, one of the wealthier landowning families in I'm sure she'll be happy. She's been brought up well and should have no problem fitting into even a gentry family. It seems like just yesterday she was a baby, following me around, clutching her favorite little doll. I'm fiercely proud of her, though. Even though I worry she may have been pampered a bit too much, I wish her the best of luck as she now starts her own family. 5th June, 1716. We begin the questioning of Prisoner 27 today. 
The warden tells us he was instructed to do so by one of the nobles currently in favor with the crown. He looks to have been a man of good learning and standing. He broke down and cried like a baby after the iron, iron was pressed into his chest. Knowing he will never be released, we need not to take care to leave him whole. I'm used to using water or a rack, something that would not leave a mark for such things, but here there is no purpose, no desire to convert a heathen or bring about repentance. Here the punishment is only meant to cause as much pain as possible until death. A job is a job, and while I have no intention of taking it up with the warden, I still have reservations about what we do here. After all, we are still nominally employees of the Crown, getting paid to inflict pain on others. Are we no different than common ruffians? 6 July, 1716. Torching people has become a daily routine, and there are no shortage of tools here. Whips, chains, iron maidens, Spanish boots. Cages, spiders, even some I had never heard or seen of have been before coming here. I must admit, I am impressed with the ingenuity of the human mind and the ways that can create such a myriad of ways to inflict pain upon another living being, but which is worse, those who think of such devices or those who use them? All those we torture beg us to kill them, but we instead keep them alive that they may suffer more. There is no rest for them. Not now, not ever. 14th August, 1716. Received a letter from Mum today. She says my brother's wanting to go to some fancy school in the East and needs money. Why would he want to go such a place as beyond me? Imagine, a university graduate in our family. I wonder what Pa would think. I know she gets some money from my sister's family, but I'm sure she doesn't want to be asking for handouts from her daughter. I want to help. I want to do as much as I can for my family. 31st August, 1716. The mad woman in solitary confinement has died. If there is such a thing as fate, she must have been born under an unlucky star. She was a merchant's daughter whose hand had been promised to the heir of a wealthy family, but he had a change of heart and abandoned her. He eventually married a nobleman's daughter and was adopted into the family which had no heir. She was brought here to keep her out of the public eye. She kept the wedding dress. She never got to wear until the day she died. I wonder... Who is more insane, her or us? 26 September, G. 1716. A strange rumor is making its rounds among the prisoners. The number of people who say they have seen a sign from God in the night is grown. None of the other gods believe there is such a thing. But such rumors are often a sign of trouble. I hope nothing happens. 3rd October, 1716. Torture, pain, and death. These fill the days of all who live here. I've come to envy those who quit living. Dear God, have mercy on my soul. I did not come here to become an executioner. I have pleaded with the warden to have pity at least on those suffering from illness, but he turned a deaf ear upon my pleas. In the end, there are only two things people care about, power and money. Those who have it, use it. Those who do not, only suffer. 13th October, hey, that's my grandpa's birthday. I feel as if I'm losing my mind. I can no longer bear to hear the screams of those trapped here. Only I could, could I help them? I would. But since I cannot, I do not wish to share their confinement a moment longer. Were it my choice, I would quit this place at once, but my family looks to me for support. Also, I cannot let Lord Webster, who found me this job, down. I must repay his confidence in me. Yeah, the other guard says that I will grow used to it soon enough. That I should not let myself be affected by trivialities. Trivialities! Can they not hear the screams? I understand now they are mad as any of the prisoners. That, then, is my fate. I, too, shall end up mad, just like them. 29th October, 1716. Woe unto you that the desire the day of the Lord. To what end is for you the day of the Lord is darkness and not light? As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and learned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? Book of Amos, chapter 5. Ah! 1st November, 1716. I'm writing this after having been awake by gunshots in the middle of the night. There are screams of joy and anger throughout the building. We are being attacked by an armed band. Apparently the sign of God the prisoners have been discussing was actually a signal from people outside the prison 
plotting to aid their incarcerated friends. The freed prisoners are going mad, killing the guards and other staff. Their positions are reversed. They flee for their lives, but are hunted down, beaten, killed, even burned alive. I find a strange satisfaction in watching them. They, who were so drunk on power and wealth, dying like insects at the hands of those they thought were masters of. The mob is sure to make its way here in time. The time of our, my, judgment is upon us. Do not grieve for me, dear sister. I will welcome them with open arms, as I, a fellow sufferer and sinner. Even now I hear footsteps. They are just at my door. They, the end. Wow, that went on. There are, like, so many good ending points, but it's like, no, 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 no. Keep going. Yeah. It's the woman who's... There's some woman locked up here. Just pledged to be married. You got screwed over, pretty much. Yeah. i put that broke ladder down. Broke ladder. I'll save my game. Just... Yeah, so, yeah, she got screwed over because Nobleman's like, nah, I'm gonna marry this girl here now. Better opportunity. So, yeah, she was cast away just so there would be any chance of her making a fuss. For, for no reason, they destroy her freedom, her life. And then. She somehow got stuffed in a closet. What the heck? Why did it change angles on you? Okay, you gotta go to your menu here. Items. Tools. Rope ladder. Nope. There has to be an exact place to use it to. Crap. Or use it here. Maybe the camera angle is telling you something. Oh, it has hooks on it. Maybe I need to go to the railing. Over here. I'll just put it on the open space. There we go. This camera angle's kind of obtuse. Oh. Another long, ominous moment. Yay. Something's not right. Oh, crap. Um. It's a boss fight. I'm gonna leave us here. And, uh. Be back next time for this not right room. Yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night. Have a wonderful night. Peace out.